This is Free Fire, a 2019 battle royale game that is pretty much a mobile version of Fortnite. The player controls one of 52 characters on an island and must collect weapons from nearby buildings. Whoever is the last one standing wins the round. On the surface, this game looks completely innocent, and it even has its own esports series. It is particularly popular in Latin America, however. Daniel Ahmed, the senior analyst of Nico Partners, cited it as the highest grossing game in Latin America in 2019. However, the game holds a sinister secret. It's no secret that Mexico has a drug cartel problem. These armed groups have been sowing terror and violence in the country for decades, playing out a war that seems to be never-ending. While they may attract some promise of power and money, this is not enough to keep up the numbers in their rank, as there are constant killings from battles with other armed groups in the law. Sometimes, mandatory drafting is necessary. These drafting efforts include forcing people to commit crimes and even murder under the threat of extreme violence to initiate them into the cartel. One such case was that of five young men who went missing in the city of Lagos in Mexico. They had been kidnapped by the Jalisco cartel and were forced to commit heinous acts of violence upon each other as an initiation ritual. These methods are not new for armed militias all over the world. However, recently, they have also moved into the gaming world to find their victims. And this is where Free Fire comes into play. Over the past several years, innocent citizens have been coerced into drug trafficking after meeting members through this online game. This is the video game tied to drug trafficking. The Jalisco Cartel is considered by the Mexican government the most dangerous criminal organization in the country a title well received. They are heavily militarized and have engaged heavily in drug trafficking as their primary source of income, going all the way from cocaine and meth up to the now infamous fentanyl. They have left a streak of massacres and assassinations of everyone, ranging from civilians and rival cartel members up to policemen and politicians. There have also been reports of cannibalization as an entry ritual during the training, and even as a regular practice. One such case was that of a video that was released by the cartel. Several members are seen holding down a man, while another member violently rips out the victim's heart and forces him to eat it. The cartel members are laughing and chanting him on. In 2021, in the city of Oaxaca, Mexico, Four children between the ages of 11 to 14 were recruited by the Jalisco cartel while playing Free Fire. A player with the nickname Rafael was playing with one of the children and quickly added them on Facebook where he used the name Moreno. He would then request they move over to WhatsApp. This was probably done to clear up the message trail and to make sure the conversation was encrypted. There, he made the young child an offer that was difficult to refuse. He told them about a job where he would be paid over four times the Mexican minimum wage. The child, who lived in a city with over a 60% poverty rate, was quick to take him up on the offer, going so far as to invite two of his friends to join him. The job itself was monitoring radio frequencies to warn the cartel about the police. They would become the hawks for the cartel, or the halcones in Spanish. El Moreno would then instruct them to go to Monterrey. He picked them up in a taxi, alongside a fourth kid, gave them fake IDs, and moved them over to a house in a neighboring city. There, they were held by two women who would take them to a bus terminal to leave to Monterey to start working for the cartel. Luckily, the kids had been reported missing by their parents, and the police were able to find them, ironically, 
through geolocalization as they were using their phones to play Free Fire. The children are all safe and were thoroughly warned about the dangers of strangers online. The man named El Moreno turned out to be a minor as well and is held in a child correctional facility. The two women were charged with kidnapping of a minor. Sadly, this is not an isolated case. In 2022, in the same city of Oaxaca, a young 12-year-old kid named Angel ran away from home, heading north of the country. He was contacted on Free Fire by a criminal organization, who convinced him to abandon his family to join them. Autoridades de Oaxaca, ojo, rescataron a Ángel, un niño de 12 años. Se fue de su casa el domingo rumbo al norte del país. ¿Por qué? Fue reclutado por un grupo criminal. ¿Cómo? A través del videojuego, del videojuego Free Fire. He had left a note to his family, reading, Sorry, Mom, for being a bad son. I'm really sorry I never did my homework. I love you a lot, Mom. Goodbye. I will always love you. After finding the notes, his family reported him missing. However, at that point, he had already met with a woman. This woman arranged a hotel room to spend the night. As in the morning, he would take a taxi that would lead him north of the country, towards his new life. He got on the taxi alone with a load of cash for his trip expenses. While in the taxi, the driver thought it was very odd for such a young kid to be traveling such a long distance alone and with that much cash. And so he decided to report it to the police. And with that, Angel was saved from the cartels. After they rescued him, the police were trying to uplift the spirits of the kid, who was in shock after all of this. Quote, Don't cry, kid. They're going to help you. Be strong. They will help you. Thankfully, Angel is now safe with his family. Probably one of the more disturbing cases on this list involves two young Mexican girls who went missing after being contacted by men on Free Fire. 15-year-old Valeria Garcia had been playing with a man named Irwin. They would go on to connect on Facebook and spend hours playing and talking to each other. Her mother would recall, quote, I could hear her laughing with them while playing. She spent all of her time playing that game in her room. On a Tuesday night in May of 2022, the young girl had requested permission to go to a friend's house for work. Her parents, however, noted she was agitated, nervous, and acting suspicious, and therefore refused to let her go outside. It wasn't normal behavior for her. As her mother explains, quote, she was very timid, didn't like going outside. She'd always prefer staying home and playing video games. She only went out to go to school. However, that night, she did something unthinkable. She gathered her belongings, and when her mom left her home to run some errands, she took the opportunity and left home, never to be seen again. Quote, I would call her, told her to come back, that we talk it out when she got home. She was receiving the calls, receiving the WhatsApp messages, but she never answered, said Veronica, her mother. Friends of the girl suspected that she ran off with Irwin to the Guerrero State, south of Mexico. The police were able to locate her phone, but it appears that it was only turned on for 15 days. And after that, the cell phone was never turned on again. Valeria has not been seen since. A similar thing happened with Angelica Lopez, a 12-year-old girl. Otro caso es el de Angélica Giovanna López, de 12 años, quien desapareció a bordo de un auto Chevrolet Blanco en Ecatepec, Estado de México, el pasado 10 de julio. She had also been playing Free Fire with an older man, and after some time, the man decided to take it one step further. CCTV footage was found where we can see the exact time the man drove off with the young girl. A white Chevy is parked, and Angelica can be seen walking up to the car, 
seemingly very nervous. As she gets near the car, the back door on the driver's side opens up. She takes a step back in what looks like fear. And quickly, a man gets out of the car and grabs a hold of her. He goes around the car with her and pushes her into the car on the back passenger door and then gets in the car as well. The car then waits for a few seconds before driving off. This would seem to suggest that there was another person driving the car. There was a major uproar from the family and the community as they claimed that the police weren't being very helpful and that it was outrageous that the license plates were not identified. They also claimed that there was footage that was not being released to the public nor to the family. After three days had passed, the girl's father received a phone call from Angelica stating she was alone at a gas station and told her she was fine. She was reunited with her family. However, there hasn't been any charges pressed onto anyone. The girl told the officers that, quote, it was her choice to leave her home. She is now safe at home. However, the men that took her are still at large. Unfortunately, Free Fire isn't the only game used by cartel members. Another much more popular video game used for recruitment is Grand Theft Auto V. In the case of Alfredo, he was a young man who, while playing Grand Theft Auto V, was contacted by a player named El Kilos CDN. CDN stands for Cartel de Noreste. It's a ruthless criminal organization operating in the north of Mexico that used to be a part of the Zetas, a very violent and bloody Mexican cartel, infamous for its gory videos and ruthless killings. On his profile, there's an image of a young man with a rifle and a bulletproof vest. Alfredo received an invitation from El Quilos to an event with the name, quote, Open Recruitment CNDZ Old School 35th Battalion. We pay in dollars, stop living in the hood and using the metro. It's your choice. A new car or the bus. We'll tell you how. Attention. Abstain lazy people, children, and judicial officers. Hail the company cartel, El Golfo. Cartel del Golfo is a longtime cartel, which began operating during the Prohibition in the 1930s, smuggling alcohol to the U.S. It has grown and remains one of the largest criminal organizations in Mexico. Alfredo was shocked about this, and took pictures of everything and reported it to the news. Who knows how many were actually involved in the event, and how many were recruited. The local police offices report that this isn't an isolated case, and the cartels have constantly made use of Call of Duty and GTA 5 to reach potential members. Even the president of Mexico has claimed that this is an ongoing effort by the cartels to use any means necessary to recruit young people, and that video games are one of their main tools. However, such cases aren't limited to just Mexico. In 2021, 25-year-old Alyssa Navarro was playing GTA Online when she received a message from a man named George. They kept playing constantly and even moved their conversations over to Snapchat until they eventually met in person. During one of their conversations, George offered to pay her up to two grand for transporting electronics through the Mexican border. In a sworn statement, federal agents say she told them she was recruited to transport electronics from Phoenix to Mexico while she was playing Grand Theft Auto and was told she would be paid up to $2,000 for the trip. While to any normal person, it would seem odd to be paid such a large amount of money for a two and a half hour drive from Phoenix to the Mexican border, it wasn't the case for Navarro, who gladly took up the job offer. So Navarro took a bus from Phoenix to Sonoita, Mexico where she would be meeting George. When she arrived, a third man named Alfredo picked her up in a jeep to go to dinner and discuss the details of the job. Once a week, she would have to pick up electronics in Phoenix and bring them to Mexico to be sold. The next day, 
Alfredo gave her the keys to the jeep and told her that it would be the vehicle she would be using to transport the goods. He gave her money and a very particular set of instructions. She would have to get gas at specific gas stations, constantly make sure the gas tank would always be full, and she would have to provide constant updates about her whereabouts. When she arrived at the Lukeville port of entry, the car was searched and over 130 pounds of liquid meth were found in the gas tank. Michelle Navarro from Phoenix. She was arrested at the Lukeville port of entry last November with nearly 130 pounds of liquid meth hidden in the car's gas tank. She was being used as a drug mule without her knowledge, or so she claimed. Drug cartels are taking on a new tactic to recruit smugglers using video games, the kind that might be in your home, to target teens and young adults for criminal activity. Federal officers questioned the veracity of the story. Who could believe they would be paid such a large amount of money for what is basically a two and a half hour drive? Navarro thought it was odd too and was having doubts herself. But these only came to her after she was already on her way to Mexico. With the release of games such as Doom and Mortal Kombat, the controversy around video games and their influence grew to be a national fear. Senators were especially appalled by a game where a scantily clad woman is tortured. It is a sick, disgusting video game, in my judgment. It's an effort to trap and kill women. And it's one that, while scientifically disproven, is still part of national discourse around gaming. And there's no denying that one of the best ways to reach the hearts and minds of people is through entertainment. While there has been much talk from politicians and activists, the U.S. government hasn't shed away from using the media to their benefit. The U.S. Department of Defense is very familiar with this concept, and has been trying to promote itself through the use of movies and even video games. America's Army was a video game created by the military to get young people interested in the life of a G.I. Joe. It was a free-to-play game, developed and published by the U.S. Army, that set out to show the gaming community an experience akin to the popular shooters of the early 2000s, while also displaying what military training looked like, trying to give the military a good look in the eyes of early teens and young adults, and boost recruitment numbers for the military. Nowadays, the US Army has stopped developing video games, and instead chose to get into esports. They've even built several divisions to get gamers involved in the military lifestyle. While to some it may seem weird for the military to be recruiting people via video games, they are at least transparent about it. Still, the idea that playing a video game might influence someone's decision to take up a firearm and fight in armed conflict is a scary one. It's a power that can influence impressionable minds without much fear of being caught. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.